Today I'm talking with Admiral McRaven. Would you talk to me about the America you see in the future? Yeah, I would see America, frankly, that is a lot more inclusive, that is a lot more diverse, uh, that takes advantage of the great talent that is out there, uh, and, and that recognizes that education, I think, is the cornerstone for our future. If you would talk to us a little bit about what you've learned in growing leaders. Leadership is about people. So if you can connect with the people that are part of your team, then I think you're going to be a better leader. Now again, we can give you the fundamentals. We can talk to you and explain to you that you know, leadership is about taking care of the troops, so to speak. Uh, leadership is about being on the front lines when they need you. Leadership is about communicating during a crisis. But I think the greatness in leadership really does have to start that is with something in their DNA. Now, sometimes you can discover that over time. Uh, you know, I have seen, uh, in my case, young men that come in that are kind of quiet, reserved, but then you give them opportunities to lead. And they begin to kind of mature and come out of their shell, and then that which was really inside them, deep inside them, all of a sudden just is magnified tenfold, and they do become those great leaders. We're always looking for a diverse pool of thinkers because the hard, complex problems require diverse thinking. They require people of diverse backgrounds. And so your ability to, to work through a complex problem is if you bring everybody in that's the, that comes from the same background, you're going to essentially get kind of the classic group think. You're going to get one idea that comes out. I've found you know, when we bring in, again, people that are uh, diverse in all levels of their background, boy, we come up with a lot of great ideas that just never would have occurred to me. I'm looking for character. Uh, it, it is about doing things that are moral, legal, and ethical. Uh, and I tell my staff, and I always told the folks in the military, we have to do things that are moral, legal, and ethical. If you build an organization and you deviate from any of those three, you may be successful for a while, mm -hmm. but at some point in time that organization will collapse. We have shied away from teaching and talking about values, right. which creates character and integrity. What are your thoughts about that? I do believe that values of, of honesty and integrity uh, are, are incredibly important and they're not open to interpretation. Those are the sort of qualities and values we ought to hold up to the world and we ought to teach the young men and women again, coming to be citizens of the United States what it means to, to have great character. I think back as I look at the videos and tapes too of you're watching that raid go down. Mm -hmm. What were you feeling? Well, at the, the time of the, uh, the Bin Laden mission, uh, I, was, I was forward. So the iconic photo that you see is set in the White House with one of my officers that is there in, in uniform. And they are all kind of observing what I'm commanding forward. But candidly, this was to some degree another mission for us. Uh, so I didn't have this great sense of history. I knew it was an important mission, no question about it. I knew that it had a lot of political risk. I knew that uh, if it failed, uh, we would have to live with that failure uh, for a long time. But having said that, uh, tactically it was a mission I was very confident that the, the SEALs and the helicopter pilots could do. Uh, they were well trained to do that. So I didn't, um, I didn't experience, I think, a lot of the concern that those on the outside experienced because I have done so many of these over my career. Uh, I knew what right looked like. I knew when the mission was going well. I knew that we had backup plans. And so I think when you're experienced, again, to sometimes to folks on the outside and they, they look in and they say, oh my gosh, you're, you're flying helicopters a long way or you're, you're in, in a compound and you might get into a firefight and they see that as it's not something they've done, so it must be special. Um, but when it's something you do every day and it's just like a doctor who does uh, heart surgery or a nurse or a teacher, when it's something they do every day, we just happen to be soldiers and uh, that is what we do every day. So again, my anxiety levels weren't very high. Uh, I think we, I knew we would accomplish the mission. Uh, and I didn't really fully appreciate what we had done until many, many months later. I think I came back here to New York. The Federal Law Enforcement Agency had invited me to their annual event and it was wonderful. I mean, there were about 2,000 you know, cops and Secret Service and marshals and uh, everybody from New York, the entire law enforcement community. And, and at that point in time, I realized how much it meant to New Yorkers in particular that we had been successful on the mission. 
And, and New Yorkers have been just incredibly gracious and incredibly welcoming to both me and, and, and others that have come up here that were part of it. But I'm always quick to point out, and I think it is important to point out, is this was not just about the SEALs and the raid uh, on bin Laden. This was about the hundreds of thousands of soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines that fought in Iraq, that fought in Afghanistan, the civilians in the State Department and the intelligence agencies. This was everybody. This was uh, the entire country. You know, we just happened to be, at the end of the day, the unit that went in and got him. But the credit really does go to all of those young soldiers, uh, sailors, airmen, and Marines, and so many of them that lost their lives in Iraq and Afghanistan. They all, they all were part of this. Thank you for being with us today, and thank you for reminding us that leadership is the same thing, regardless of where we're practicing it. Thank you, Gail.